uh, this talk is about, as you see from the title, it's about something called matrix factorization. So I assume you don't know what is it, so you are curious about it. So that is a good time now. So, okay, first of all, so this is the content. We are going to talk about what is matrix factorization or especially what is non-negative matrix factorization, NMF. And then we will begin with some brief introduction and then we will jump to the application. That's the motivation, why study this thing? And then we will go back to the mathematics. That is, uh, what is this stuff and why this is important? Why it is interesting? And then because the mathematics of this subject is bored, and then I will just pick one aspect of it. That is the continuous optimization. That's called a structural non-convex, non-smooth optimization. And then we will just briefly touching what's the core idea in this thing. And then we will end this talk by talking about the extension. That is, what about other related models. So that's it. Yeah, if you have any question, you feel free to stop me anytime. Okay, so let's start. So what is NMF? What is non-negative matrix factorization? You are given something and your task is to find something. What is the given thing is that you are given a matrix. So this is a matrix. This matrix is M by N. So you are given a matrix looks like this. And then notice that there's a plus here. So that means all the elements here are larger than or equal to zero. That means there's no negative element. That means if your matrix has some negative stuff that is outside the scope of this talk. And you are given a number R that is one, two, three, four, five, that's integer. And your task is to find matrix W and H. They are all non-negative such that this W and H multiply together equal to this X. And this matrix W has R row columns and H has R rows. So it's like this, you have an M or X, and then you have an R, let's say R is a small number, then you are having this as R, and then you have an H, looks like this. And these two multiplied together has to be equal to this input. So this is the NMF. This is actually, a constraint satisfaction problem. So what does it mean? You're given some input. Your task is to find in this set, this is a constraint set or feasible set, find the W and also find the H such that these constraints are satisfied. That means as long as you can find a W and an H such that this is true, then you solve the problem. And of course, what's the important thing? Everything is not negative. If you don't have the non-negativity, then this is basically a very simple factorization. You can do it by QR, SVD, LU, tons of way you can solve it. So the specialty here is that all the elements of the input matrix and the output factors, they are all non-negative. And this is actually making the problem very difficult. And I will go into use these notations. Some people may like to use a transpose here or use an U and V, so they look a pair, but W and H is the traditional symbol used in the field of NMF. So what are the example? Suppose I have a matrix defined like this, this is called EDM. You don't need to really care about what is this, so suppose I have a matrix looks like this. What I just asked is that find W and H such that equal to the matrix. So this can be the W, this can be the H, but this is very boring because this is just the identity matrix. So this is not interesting. What is interesting is, for example, this is more interesting. This is the matrix M, this is a W, and this is a H. Notice that this has a six row and then six columns, but this guy only has five columns. So actually the size is smaller. And there's an even more interesting fact. For example, this matrix has rank three, but this matrix has rank five and same here. So actually this kind of behavior, that is the rank is smaller than this special rank here is a non-trivial fact and a very important subject in the study of NMF. So what is the problem related to this subject? First of all, the question is, is this problem solvable? And if that is the 
question, then you will have another question related to it. That is how to tell if the pair M and R is solvable. Of course, then you will ask if the problem is solvable, is the solution unique? And then the follow-up question is, when will the solution be unique? Of course, the next question will be how exactly, how we approach this problem, how to solve it. And then what about if R is unknown? That is, you only given an M, you don't know R. So how to find R? And how difficult it is to find R? This question actually is related to the discrete part of this uh, problem. And finally, oh, suppose M and R has no NMF. So what is the smallest perturbation delta such that the M plus this perturbation, now is a new matrix, has an NMF. And of course, NMF requires the matrix to be non-negative. So we can also ask, what's the smallest delta such that the M plus the perturbation still non-negative has an NMF? These are actually some very difficult question in the research of NMF. And there are actually two types of NMF. One is called exact and one is called approximate. So what is exact? Exact means you find W and H such that they are equal. The product equal to the input matrix M. This problem is actually MP hard and is proved by a professor in Waterloo, his devices. And actually he's my postdoc supervisor now. This NMF in the exact sense is actually equivalent to a problem called um, nested cone fitting or something related to polyhedral combinatorics. That is, this is related to some polygon or polyhedron. And if we don't care about the exactness, we say we want to find W and H such that this thing means that the distance between W and H is small. What does it mean small? There should be a number to tell us how close they are. So the number is this epsilon. That is, we are saying, if we can find a product W and H such that the distance between M and W and H is within this epsilon, then we say that, okay, this is the solution. And of course, what is this distance D? There can be any distance. The most simple one, trivial one, is the Forbinus distance or Eukinian distance. This is basically the L2 distance. So if we try to have a WH such that this is very small, that means this is true in the Euclidean sense. Then yes, that is a NMF and this is a proximate NMF. And of course, we can choose whatever distance we want. For example, L1 distance, L infinity distance or some crazy distance, for example, kuberg lyell divergence and itakura saito divergence. I think you've never heard of this. So you may wonder what the heck are these crazy functions? They look so ugly. Well, they are very ugly, yes, but they have specific usage in some application. For example, the Kuberg library divergence is actually a distance for probability distribution. That is for Euclidean geometry, you measure two point by saying this is the distance, but for probability, you cannot say, oh, this is the distance because it's a probability. It's something uncertain. So you need to have some distance fulfilling some set of rule, then it will be a good distance for probability. The Cooper library divergence is one of them. So what about the Itakura Saito, this Japanese name divergence is the same for some distribution. And more specifically, this is a very good distance for audio or for music. That is you have some data and there are music data that will be a good good distance for the NMF. If you have a music data and you try to put in the forbidden distance, I, I can tell you that will be a very bad. So, so in the NMF, usually, usually we will consider a thing called low rank approximation. This has a very important meaning. They're saying that the number of columns here, that is here have three column and here you have three row. So in this case, this R is free. M and N is the dimension of this matrix. So you can see this has five row and 10 columns. So in this case, three is smaller than these two number. This, this is called low rank because the rank of this product is smaller than the input matrix. So this R is called rank of factorization. And in fact, what is R? There actually lots of uh, important meaning. For example, 
This is a W and H. So what is rank? Rank in linear algebra sense is the sum of R rank one matrix. For example, this is a rank free matrix. This is also a rank free matrix. So this is the product equal to this M, but we can also say that this is equal to this column multiply this row. So this is actually called exterior product. So this form a rank one matrix. Same for the yellow one, same for the red one. So we have three rank one matrices and added together. And that's why rank of M is three. But now we are talking about NMF. So everything is non-negative. So this is the rank one non-negative matrix. So this is also a rank one non-negative matrix. So in this case, in the NMF sense, this matrix M has a non-negative rank equal to three. And then in the third point, I have something called rank CP. This is called co-positive rank. And this is basically the same as a non-negative rank, but these two matrix are the same. In this sense, this is a co-positive rank because this matrix, if you take transpose, is this guy. So that means in this figure, in this specific example, this matrix have rank equal to three, non-negative rank equal to three, and also co-positive rank equal to three. And the co-positive rank and non-negative rank actually have very serious uh, issue in discrete optimization, especially in, uh, in an area called extended formulation that is related to the polytope. But I'm not going to talk about it in too detail. So I've just explained to you what's NMF. Then of course you will ask a question, then why NMF? What's the heck of NMF? Of course, it's, there's some reason. The reason is, Number one, it's very useful. And number two, it's fun. So why you study mathematics? Because it's useful and fun. If it's not useful and not fun, why the heck you would do that? So what is the fun? These are the fun. NMF is actually related to a bunch of things. You can see it's related to linear algebra, multilinear algebra about something called tensor. And then of course, discrete optimization, which is related to combinatorics of extended formulation. And then also continuous optimization and convex analysis and then computational geometry, blah, 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 and so on. So you can see there's so much fun. You see, NMF is related to so many things. So it's impossible for a person to master all this subject. If that's the, if that's the case, that person will be too happy. So I'm not good at all this subject. I'm only good at some of them. For example, I'm only, I'm only good at the continuous optimization part. So in this talk, I will focus more on the continuous optimization part. But of course, I do know other area, so I will talk about it later. So what about the usefulness of NMF? Well, this is a list. Actually, you can see the list is too long that the slide cannot show. I can tell you this list is, is, is so long. It's about three slides. That means if I, if I can show the slide three stack together, that's the, all the application. And in the coming few slides, I'm going to talk about some application. And first, this slide is telling you NMF is an active research area. Look at the day. This is April 30, 2021. That means few days ago. And you can see it's about NMF on something called legal document analysis. Yeah, so this is to show that first, NMF is a hot topic. Two, NMF is very useful and free. People use it to solve their own problem. For example, something called topic modeling. So again, this is the four point on telling you why I study this course. Of course, the last one is the, is the worst one, but the third one, mathematical curiosity is the most important one. So let's talk about the math later. But as I told you, there are so many things about this NMF. I cannot talk all of them. Otherwise, this talk has to be 10 hours long. So I will talk about a slice of it, some aspect of it. I will talk about the geometry. And then from the geometry, you understand what the heck is NMF. And then from the geometry, because you understand what, how does it look, then you will naturally know what is this problem. And then we will move on to the problem, how to solve this problem. That is the algorithm. And then we will move on, continue, move to continuous optimization. So now talk about the application. The first application is about optics, that is physics. 
So I'm sure you know what is optics. So first, first of all, this is a red apple. Why red apple is red? It's because the light from the sun has a rainbow and then go to the apple, the apple magically absorb the green and the blue and then only reflect the red. And then in your eyeball, you see the red light. That's why apple is red. And if we quantify this absorption reflection, we have a curve looks like this. So this X axis is wavelength. That means the color, blue, green, red. And because this apple reflect the most of the red light. So at the red point, these have a very high number. So this is actually called reflectance spectra. So this is simple optics. But what about if we do it on a larger scale, an apple is a small object. Yeah, you can do the same. You can just take picture of the earth. That is, you have some satellite flying in the sky and then take picture of the earth. So what the satellite seeing is actually the light we flag the of the object from the sun. So that's, this is called remote sensing. That is basically satellite taking picture of the earth. So you may wonder what the heck doing this. This have, of course, there's some useful application. So what, first of all, what, what, what is this thing? So first of all, let's say this picture, you have a, you have an environment. You have some ground, there's a river, there's some forest. First of all, when you take picture, Normal people take picture as a colorful RGB picture. There is color, red, green, blue. But if you use a satellite, there's no way you stop just taking picture in the visible light. You can take picture of the X-ray, the gamma ray, the infrared. So that means what? That means if you take a picture, you can have multiple pictures of the same scene, but with respect to different wavelength. That is, that's how this is showing. So this is the picture in the red rainbow, but different slice of the picture is actually X-ray picture, infrared picture, gamma ray picture. And as I told you, different stuff have different reflections. So you have this kind of curve that is the reflectance spectra. So what the heck is doing here is that suppose there are mice under the ground. So how do you determine there's a gold mine there? The stupid way is you go there and dig the ground, but that is very stupid because that is tired. So how do we do that? You just call the satellite, take picture, and then if you can try to analyze this picture, somehow they tell you, oh, there is gold under the ground or there is oil under the ground, then you don't need to dig there. Yeah, that's the application. This is actually very important. So how the heck did they do that? So this is an example. Suppose I have this picture. This is a picture. This is a real picture somewhere in California. Or I don't remember, is it California, but somewhere in US. And then this is the RPG picture. And then at the back is the picture in X-ray, in gamma ray, in infrared, blah, blah, blah. So each picture, there's a picture is actually a, a matrix. And each boxes in this matrix is a pixel, right? But now you have many pixels. So you have a theta, I call it X. And then this is the spectrum. Each spectra can be represented by a column in the W. That is, I encode the spectra as the column in the matrix W. And then for the H, I will encode how much this spectra, that means this material is presented in the picture. So for example, in this specific example, this is a picture of an urban data set. That is, you have some urban building, you have some vegetation, you have some road, and each material, they have a specific spectra. Then you can decompose this data into this specific spectra, multiply their abundance. So you can see this is the row, this is the building, this is the vegetation here. The white color means the intensity is high and black color means the intensity is low. So you can see they are correspond to row, grass, dirt, root tough, tree because row is soil. So their absorption spectra should be different from vegetation, should be different from root tough because they can be metal or can be clay or stone. So this is the application. 
So how is really that possible? This is the idea, very simple. For example, if you have light shining on grass, it gives you a specific spectra, that is the spectra. And suppose you shine it on a, on a row called asphalt for the chemical name, you have this kind of behavior. So suppose you have a pixel in the image that is 40% of row and 60% of grass. So what are you expecting? Of course, you are expecting this stuff. You have 60% grass spectra plus 40% row spectra, right? So this is exactly what NMF learns. So why NMF is playing a role here? First of all, the 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 are non-negative numbers. Number two, the spectra are also non-negative numbers. So that's why if you run NMF on this kind of data, it gives you the perfect decomposition, which makes sense. And if you just run a QR decomposition, SVD decomposition, PCA, or whatever matrix factorization, yeah, they will give you two matrix, but that two matrix is nonsense. You cannot tell anything. But if you do an NMF, you can see, oh, I can know what is inside this picture. And I can tell which part is what chemical, what component. So this is the application of NMF. And then you may think of it, okay, we only do it for the geometric uh, sensing for searching resources. So that is not something I want to do. Now let's tell about, let's talk about another application. So this is a very famous uh, new story. There's a, there's a lady in Spain and she worked in a church and then she found that there's an old painting in, on the left that is some painting of Jesus and then it was uh, broken and then she tried to replace it and repair it and then her drawing skill is so bad and then now you see the right part is the, is the painting restoration. Okay, I'm now telling you, the NMF can be used to solve this problem. Wow, how? The same thing. For example, you have some painting you want to repair. The fact is how to repair a painting, you don't know what kind of color the, the painting use, right? So what you can do is you scan the, the painting according to different wavelength. It's the same as you scan the earth with, with different wavelength. Then now you have this kind of picture. And then you try to analyze the, the, the spectrum of these kind of figures, then it will correspond to certain pigment because different color have different pigment. So by doing this, you will know which pixel, oh, this pixel is red, this pixel is blue, or navy blue, or ocean blue, or sky blue, so many different color of blue, then you can correctly to fill in those broken area. So this can be an application in art work conservation. So see, a mathematic that looks totally useless actually have so many applications. And then what's next? Um, there will be something about tax mining, but too bad I look at the clock, I don't have time, so I will skip this one. And then the next one will be music, which I was originally planned to play this music, but the, the problem is uh, the Zoom cannot uh, show you the video. So I will just tell you, okay, I will have this slide upload in my website. If you really want to look at it, you just click this link. So what is this showing is saying that you have some music. Let's say you have 10 people playing music together. You have one microphone recording these 10 people playing together. By doing NMF, I can split the recording back to these 10 music playing together. Yeah, or in other words, assume there are 10 people talk to you at the same time, you can't understand. And you have a microphone recorded by doing NMF, I can split the microphone recording back to the 10 person speech. So that's, that seems magic, but actually no, it's the mathematics playing at, in the back. So by talking about the application, I assume I have motivated you enough that this is actually a topic that worth study. So now let's look at the mathematics. So what's the mathematics? Record that we have something called non-negative. That is the number in the NMF is all non-negative. So what's the mathematical language that deal with this non-negativity? It's called conic combination. So first record your first year undergrad linear algebra course, this expression here is called linear combination. Now, 
we are, we are talking about NMF. So this stuff cannot be any number. This kind of number can only be non-negative, which is here. So now this linear combination becomes something called conic combination. So what does it look like? Well, that means what? That means the point can only be a positive portion or positive multiple or combination of the X and Y, which is X1 and X2 here. So this geometry form a cone. Why there's a zero? Well, if theta one and theta two are zero, then of course we have zero. So this is a picture of the NMF. No, no, this is a mathematics of the picture of NMF. So this is the simple cone combination. So with such thing in our mind, now I can tell you NMF is actually telling the picture of a cone. Suppose I have a matrix M and now suppose this M only have is a three dimensional object. That is, I have many columns, but the, each column only have three numbers. So I can plot it in the three dimensional space, right? And don't forget these points, the M is non-negative. So I can only plot, I can plot them in the non-negative orbit. That is the positive side of the, of the coordinate. So I have a bunch of points. Each point is actually one column in the M. So I have a bunch of points. So what is M equal WH? It's a picture of what? Of cone. Because in the last slide, I show you the non-negative combination basically means conic combination. So now the NMF is basically the conic combination repeated many, many, many times. But the thing is, this M, each point in the M is contained in a cone represented by W. And in this example, let's say W have three column. That means there's three point. So I'm shown here in the three point in red. So that means what? Here, it means M equal WH means that all these points are actually stored or encapsulate or capture inside a cone that is represented by this free red point. And in the mathematical term, this cone has a very complicated name. It's called the negative polyhedral simplical cone. So what does it mean? First of all, non-negative. Yeah, you know what's non-negative? What is polyhedral? It means the basis of this, the, the base is not circle, it's finite. So about simplical, it basically means that the, the, this triangle is irreducible, or in other words, in linear algebra sense, this W is full rank. And here you see another funny thing. Yeah, suppose you stand here, you stand here and you look at this angle. What you will see, you will see all this point will be inside this triangle because at this angle, you don't sense the distance on this direction. You only sense the distance of point in this plane. So you only see the point looks like this. And actually that's true. Suppose the matrix H is normalized or, or the point have unit L1 norm, which I will explain in a moment, then the point will be squeezed into this plane. So this is basically what, I, what I'm saying. So I can skip that. So this slide is just to, um, back up what I just told you, how come NMF is telling a cone? So this is the NMF, M is equal to WH. So M can be many, many columns and W can be many columns and H can be many columns. So suppose I consider this guy. So this guy will be equal to what? This guy will be equal to this matrix multiply the first column. So this matrix multiplied the first column is equal to this A multiplied the first column, B multiplied this column. So that means this thing, right? And don't forget A, B, all the number are non-negative. So this is non-negative combination, which is conic combination. And this is true for all the M. So that means this W1, W2 containing all the points. And that's how this picture is telling you. So this is the math. And of course, if we have some uh, funny, funny ex ex additional constraint, for example, this M and this one, this W1 has unit norm, which is blocked here. That means these vectors have unit L1 norm or L2 norm, then we will have specific structure. 
And then this is in viewing this picture in another angle. That is, we view this picture from this angle. Suppose we stand here and look at this way. So what you will see, we will see something like this. So the point are this blue point, which is a ray. And then the W, as I told you, is the, is the cone containing all this blue point. So you have a cone, red cone, that is storing the blue point. What about the green, green one? The green one is actually the identity matrix. That is the non-negative orphan. So this is the biggest non-negative cone you can, you can have. So by looking at this picture, you can focus on this guy first. You don't need to care about this guy. So by looking at this picture, actually the story of NMF is a very simple story. You are given what? You are given the blue dot. You're given the blue dot. Find a cone holding all the blue dots. But this is actually a very bad question. Why? If I just ask you, I give you a bunch of blue dots, find a cone to hold the red dot, then you don't need to even think. You just give me the green cone because the green cone hold all the blue dots. So to refine this question, the real question is, given you the blue dots, find a cone that is in between the green cone and the blue cone. So it's like the blue thing will form a cone, the red is a cone and the green is cone. You are given two cones, the green that is the identity matrix and the blue that is the data point, find a cone in between these two cones. So this is the mathematics or the geometry of the NMF. If you have this idea in mind, then you will, you will have uh, the following uh, thinking maybe, that is, can we pick the point on the blue point that is furthest away to form the cone? Yes. Suppose, now look at this figure. Suppose there are three points in the blue point that is very far away from each other. For example, this point, this point, and this point. And in this case, it just happened. If I pick these three points, and form the cone, this cone will hold all the blue point, well, including themselves, yes. And in this specific situation, this NMF has a special name called separable NMF. Why separable? Well, that's the math detail. I'm not going to talk about it. So I'm telling you, this is a special case. And in general, we cannot do that. For example, in this case, if you try to find the point that is furthest away, let's say this point, and let's say this point, you cannot form a cone to contain the, the, the other points because this three point, you cannot, you miss this point, you miss this guy and you miss this guy. So that is uh, the, the geometry. And the thing I just talked to you formally has a name. It's called nested polytop problem. You don't need to read this thing. What you need is you're given A, a cone. You're given B, another cone you find an E such that it's in between A and B. And I'm telling you, NMF can be translated to this problem. So A can be described as the convex combination of a bunch of points. B can be represented as a bunch of inequality. That means NMF is a, is a factorization that is looking like this, like a linear algebra thing, can be expressed as this kind of uh, expression. And this is a theorem. Of course, I'm not going to talk about how to prove it because it's a five page theorem. So if you want to read it, you can go to this book. But I'm telling you, this is the math. That is, NMF is actually a, a geometric problem. And the geometry is you fit a cone in between two cones. So now, this is another picture. In this case, the point has unit error norm. That is, the, the, the point from, z, from the origin to the point, this line, the sum is equal to one. So in this case, all this point will be on the surface of this unit simplex. I assume you know what is unit simplex. And in this case, you can see that the, the, the cone problem is actually become a how problem. That is, you're given the data point, the blue thing, and they have a convex how. And then you are also having the unit 
the identity matrix. And this also form a convex hull, which is a triangle. Your task is to find a hull, the red one, to contain the blue one and be contained by the black one. And for this uh, geometric interpretation, how does it relate to the NMF? This is the geometry, but what about the, the number of points here? The number of points here is actually related to the R. So in all this example, R is three. So you can imagine if R is four, then you are not having a triangle, but you have some quadrilateral or a square. And if you have R equal to five, then you will have some hexagon pent pentagon. And then if R is very big, you're actually trying to fit something looks like a circle if R is very big. So as you know, fitting some polyhedral stuff for very big R, that is a, a very complicated polyhedral shape is very difficult. So this is also telling you NMF for, for R is very big to solve this problem is very difficult. So, but as I told you, this is very difficult. So how to solve it? So now let's look at the illustrator. So you can see this, is it, yeah, this, 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 right? So this is the screen. This thing is, the, is a projection. That is, uh, this is like we are standing here looking at this, so we will see a triangle. Oh, no, not here. So we see a triangle. And in this case, the data point are the black point. And as I told you, this data point should be captured within a triangle. So in this case, these black points are captured within the red triangle. So what is the blue triangle? Well, first of all, the red triangle is the ground truth. That means this is the underlying triangle that generates all the points. And in practice, we don't know because if we know we solve the NMF, because what you are given are only the data point, that is the black dots. Your task is to find NMF, which is find the triangle, that is the W and the coefficient H. So suppose the data point is generated, generated like this, your task is to find the triangle. So the blue one is the estimator, it's, the, it's a triangle you guess. So in this example, it's telling you, it's showing you how to find the red triangle. How? Very simple. If you, if, you, if you have this kind of data structure, if you have this kind of data structure, how do you find the red cone? The idea is you try to find a cone that has the smallest volume. Suppose you can find a cone that has the smallest volume to hold all the points, then this cone should be unique. So that's the idea. And if the data point is having this kind of structure, that is the extreme point just happen to contain all the other points. And for this kind of data, if you find the smallest cone, then the cone will be these three points, right? And in that case, this idea also holds. So what I just told you is a very special NMF model or NMF class called non-negative matrix factorization with minimum volume. So looks like this. So this is now a matrix factorization problem expressed as a function that you want to minimize. So in general, the NMF problem have this form. You try to minimize the distance between the given matrix and the product subject to something. So what is this thing? This can be the constraint or something called regularizer. Now we don't care. But if I write it down explicitly, this thing is equal to all these three added together. So what is this guy? This guy is called indicator function. So basically it means if the stop inside is not positive or not negative, then this will give you infinity. And since you try to minimize this guy, so you will prevent this happen and you are forcing the thing inside to be non negative. And the same for the H. So these two are easy to understand. What about this crazy stuff? Okay, this thing is related to the volume. So this, basically this is the volume of the, of the convex hull. That means this is the volume of this thing or the volume or the volume of, of this thing. Maybe you have uh, learned it uh, before. For a polytope, 
you can compute explicitly the volume of this complex polytop. But for R that is very big, the computation will be very simple, but very, very difficult, not simple. So actually this is a, a proxy. That is, this is actually an approximation of the volume of the convex hull. Why? Well, that will be the mathematical detail, which I'm not going to talk about in this talk. So as a conclusion, what is this stuff? This thing is data fitting term. It's trying to minimize the distance between this product and M. That is, you try to find some W and H such that they are close to this guy, because if they are close to the M, this whole number will be a very small number, right? And then what are this guy? This is just a, the constraint, because in NMF, you have the non-negative constraint. With this two term, with this structure, this two will force the W and H to be non-negative. What about this guy? This guy is to force the volume to be small. Because if you don't have this constraint, what will happen here is that I can form another triangle looks like this. Then this triangle also contain the blue one, right? Then that will be bad because this is not the minimum volume solution. Because what I want is the smallest cone containing this point and that will be unique. So the volume thing is very important. So I just talk about to you, this is the problem you want to solve as a minimization problem. So this problem actually has a more general form that is looking like this. So this is a general form. That is, you have a function that the cost or the objective has three parts. The first is the F that only works on X. The second is a G only works on Y. And the last is the H function, which works on both X and Y, which here, yeah, you can call this is the X, this is the Y, then this is the F, this is the G. And for the H is this guy plus, no, no, this is the H. If this, if this is the X, then this also only on X. So this thing plus this thing will be the F function. This only works on H, which is the Y. So this is the G function. This function have both X and Y. So this is the H function. So in general, the problem I show you for NMF has this form. Okay, you don't need to care about what, what the heck is this thing. This is just a math thing. So how to solve this thing? There are actually many algorithms. You can see there are so many jargon or short term. Basically, there's a bunch of uh, method. So what is the idea? It's basically very simple. You solve this problem on X. You, you, you don't care about Y, you solve it on X. And then you have the new X. And then you don't care about the X, you solve the problem on Y and you repeat. That's the idea. And this is basically the idea called block quality design. And then of course you can improve this block quality design by something else, which is a bunch of thing here. And I can tell you, this is my method, my research, and I can tell my method beat them all. Yeah. So what, what, what those, those algorithm looks like? So basically looks like this. You have the problem here, your variable is X and Y. So first you have to initialize X and Y zero. And then you do an iterative update. That is for iteration K equal to one, two, three, until you stop, you just do something like update. So what's update? It's like do something on the variable. So what is the do something? It's gradient descent or extrapolate the gradient descent or Newton's iteration. These are all the stuff in nonlinear optimization or, or continuous optimization. If you have took the class, then you will know. If you don't, if you haven't taken the class, well, anyway, it's not important. Basically, what I said is like, you do something on the variable and then they will magically become a better variable. And then you keep doing it. They will become a better and better person. And then at the end, they become the solution. That's it. Of course, you do something. The do something itself have so many things you can do. So you have to fit lots of constraints. For example, how does this do something become fast? And why is this slow in some problem? How do you know this is slow? What's the underlying pro principle behind the speed of this kind of convergence? How do you make the thing fast? These are all very difficult problem. And these are all the main research focus of optimization in the continuous uh, setting. And then after I talk about uh, the application, 
Then I talk about the geometry, and from the geometry, I talk about the minimum volume thing and talk about how to solve it. So that means I just talk about a slice of NMF called minimum volume NMF. So NMF is not just about minimum volume NMF. You can do a lot of things. For example, you can go to tensors. So what the heck is tensor? The first thing in your mind you may think of tensor is this kind of thing, black hole, Einstein, blah, blah, blah. No, tensor is actually very simple. Tensor is this thing. So recall that many, 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 many slides ago, I have a slide showing you a matrix is equal to three matrix having this form added together. So this is like you have a vector in this direction and a vector in this direction and they form a rank one matrix. So assume you can have another vector in the third direction. This thing is a cube. And this cube is actually called a rank one tensor. And then as I told you, the number of this thing is the rank of the matrix. So the same, the number of this cube added together, each is rank one. So this tensor thing has rank R. Here are R of them. So this is actually called CPD. And suppose I want to do NMF in this form. Yes, I can do it in the same way. So, so this is the idea of tensor. You're actually extending the idea of matrix to a higher order. So this is the idea, very simple. You don't need to worry about the Einstein thing in the previous slide, although they are tensor too. Actually, these two things are related. And because this is a tensor thing, if you really want to write down a mathematic, this is just some equation to scare you away. Basically, this means that, so nothing special. And if you want to solve the optimization problem, the same, you minimize the distance between this X, the input, and this crazy thing. So you just write it down here. Nothing, nothing strange. So this can be done in the same sense as the NMF. That is, you solve, find all this column, and then they have to, they have to be non-negative. And in this case, this thing is called non-negative tensor factorization, which I shown in the bottom. So this is one extension of NMF. What else? You can, of course, not stop there. For example, as I told you, the W is some spectra from the application. But what about if the column of W are not spectra, but some polynomial or maybe some trigonometric polynomial? Yes, you can do that. And this will make NMF have some relationship to some polynomial optimization or to something on Fourier analysis or harmonic analysis. Or why stop at real number? Because non-negative number are real number. So why don't we go to complex number? Of course you can. And I have a paper just recently on this issue. And furthermore, you can go crazy, go to something called log concave or unimodal. Yeah, this should be log concave. I missed the N here. Yes, of course you can. And I also have a paper on this. And then why continuous variable? Why not discrete variable? Yes, you can. And I'm now secretly having a paper on this. And of course, why deterministic? Why not stochastic? Yes, again, you can have it. And of course, I also have a paper secretly on this. And then these are on the domains. What about the metrics? That means the function D on, on telling you the distance between the product and the original matrix. Yes, you can move to other distance. Let's say you don't move, you don't use Euclidean distance. You use those crazy Japanese name distance or, yeah, of course you can or you use something called optimal transport or Wasserstein distance, which is very hot right now. This is a very hot research right now. And then if you want very fancy advanced distance, you can talk about this thing called Hubert's projective matrix, which is something very complicated. So this is related to the domain, the, the thing you work on it. This is related to the distance function you work on it, but also you can switch the algebra. For example, you can switch to something called max plus semi ring, which has very important application in discrete optimization right now, because this has very good application in, in something called a time interval scheduling problem, or you can just try to work on this due to curiosity. 
So this is one way you work on NMF. You don't change anything. You just change the algebra. So this is like in, in tropical semi rain, three plus three is three. Well, if you don't know what I mean, it's okay. And then, and then cliff flop algebra is basically another algebra for NMF. Why study this? Because this has very useful property in the polytop computation. So that means this is useful. And of course, now in the applied math or machine learning, deep learning become very, very famous, popular. So you can consider deep NMF. So what is deep NMF? Well, previously, I just told you, you can have a matrix factorized into product of two guys. So you have two matrix. What is deep? Oh, very simple. You just have a bunch of matrix keep going on and until you want to stop. So this is deep. But now you increase the number of unknowns your problem become much more difficult than before. So actually this is not an easy thing. So they have a lot of research you can do. And lastly, this is almost the end and the time is good. So if you want to learn more about this subject, of course, there's a very good book. This book just happened published last year and I'm having this book right now. This book is written by my wonderful PhD supervisor, Nicola Gillis. So, and if you want to work on this subject, of course you can read this book or you even talk to him, see can he give you some research opportunity? I think he will. Or you visit this website for more information. So the end, what's the summary? NMF, that's it. Yeah. <laughs>